Welcome to AM Agenda. Well, after announcing a $10.4 billion economic stimulus package last week, the Rudd government is now looking at what other options and steps it can take to protect Australia from the global financial downturn. A short time ago, I spoke with the Shadow Infrastructure Minister, Andrew Robb, talking about some measures that could be taken to fast-track infrastructure spending. Andrew Rob, thank you for your time. The Australians reporting this morning that one of the next steps the government may take to prop up the economy is to fast track about six hundred million dollars worth of spending on small infrastructure projects. Is this a measure that you'd support? Uh, well, we, we're quite supportive of uh, infrastructure spending in itself, but also the fast tracking of infrastructure spending to to try and deal with the financial the impact of the financial meltdown. Uh, but when you do fast track any expenditure, especially in the infrastructure area, it puts a much greater onus on the government to make sure that there are very objective criteria and that it's very transparent. We, we can't have the community feeling that there may be an undue political process uh, at play. Therefore, there's great onus on the government to get it right in terms of the procedures. It's a bit rich, though, to warn about potential Labor port barrelling, isn't it, after there was so much criticism levelled at the former Howard government about its regional partnership scheme? Uh, there was uh, a lot of politics played uh, by the government about the regional partnerships, but um, the subsequent uh, Senate inquiries has suggested that the process uh, was a very valid one and that um, you know, many, many very important projects were supported by the regional partnerships. That's why we're not opposed to infrastructure spending uh, and we're not going to play politics with it but the government has been at But you are playing politics with it by no, suggesting that this will be... Well, uh, if the government does not have clear and transparent processes then people will be concerned about how the decisions were taken and was there a political influence. Clearly with this one that they've announced this morning the decisions in the end will be ministerial decisions. That puts even more greater onus on the government to make sure that there's a transparent process and they can defend the decisions that have been taken. If they do that, not a problem. But these decisions would also be overseen by Infrastructure Australia, wouldn't they, which of course is an independent statutory body? Well, it, again, that's not clear. They've said that they will go through a, a process, but that process has not been spelled out yet. And the Building Australia Fund legislation is, is not in the Parliament. Uh, it's all a matter of trust at the moment. We've been told you know, a lot of fine-sounding sentiments, and that's, that's great if, if it's followed through, but we want to see it. We want to see that there is the workings that are done to work out what projects take precedent, that that's on the table and everyone can have a look at it and make their own judgments. We are part of the opposition's economic team. One of the other options available to the government is bringing forward the $10 billion worth of tax cuts. Is that something the opposition would like to see on the table? Well, that was something we certainly felt was a serious option. Um, the government has decided to spend half, a, half of the surplus. Um, these issues going forward, it needs to, they need to see what surplus actually materialises. Of course, the, the surplus that was predicated in the budget last year was um, one that was due by 30 June next year. Well, we've got to see now you know, how the economy performs and whether that surplus in fact does materialise. Next month, Kevin Rudd may be attending a series of meetings uh, with uh, George Bush and other European leaders about the global financial crisis. The opposition has repeatedly attacked Kevin Rudd for being Kevin 747, but do you think this sort of trip would be worthwhile? Well, we are in the middle of the worst financial meltdown since 1929, and it's very important that the government of the day um, be well abreast of what's, of what's occurring. And if the Prime Minister is invited, I'm not sure he's invited yet, uh, but if he's invited, um, it, you know, it's quite proper for him to make a judgment. If he, needs, he feels he needs to be there, he needs to be there. So we can't expect to have any more quips about 747? Well, you know, our comments about 747 were well placed, I think. I mean, in the first term, in the first year, less than the first year, had spent, Mr Rudd had spent long before this financial meltdown occurred, um, I think in excess of 50 nights uh, away, 
Now, there are a lot of issues to get on top of here, a lot of issues, which we felt were not being addressed, and I think our comments and our concerns were well placed. But we are in the middle of a financial meltdown, and if the government feels it must be there, well, uh, that is their call. Looking at the latest poll results out today, Labor's now more popular than it was at the last election. What do you think this is saying about your effectiveness as uh, putting forward an alternative government? Well, again, we're in the middle of the, the biggest financial meltdown since 1929. It's a matter of great moment, and I think it's not to be unexpected that the community would gravitate uh, around the government of the day and uh, give support and encouragement to, to get on with dealing with that major crisis. But interestingly, I thought um, the same polls showed that Malcolm Turnbull's uh, favourability had jumped 10% to 55%, I think as high as it's ever been for an opposition leader. Still 15 points or so behind Kevin Rudd as preferred Prime Minister though. That's true, but the point is that um, in the middle of this meltdown, um, the opposition leader's uh, favourability has jumped significantly and I think what it does say is that the community also supports the approach that's been taken by the coalition to keep the government accountable yet giving support for the direction that the government's taking in dealing with this major issue. Mr Rob, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Coming up after the break, we'll look further at the political implications of the global financial crisis, plus the shellacking that Labor got in the ACT in New South Wales over the weekend with our Monday panellists, Senators Mark Abib and Mitch Fifield.